I can't cook. That's not a cute statement, and it's not a tagline. It is a fact. I am dangerously inept in a kitchen. If it's 20 minutes in the oven, or a couple of minutes in the microwave and stir, I can cope. Every morning I have bacon and egg for breakfast, and I can cook that to what I class as an edible standard, but we do average probably one smoke out a month and probably a couple of fires a year. I'm not kidding, I'm dangerous in a kitchen. I have no aptitude for it, I have no interest in cookery, although I enjoy eating. I have abysmal time management skills, I have no real concept of time passing, which we'll come to in another video. I get bored extremely easily, and due to other executive function management issues, which again we'll talk about later, I just watch things burn, I will stand there and watch it flambe. Which means that, after 40 years on this earth, I can feed myself with takeaways and 20 minutes in the oven. That's resulted in me being fucking enormous. Um, I'm two and a half stone down now, again, later video, but I still need to be able to do something slightly better in the kitchen. I need to learn what is the purpose of fruit. So I thought I'd start somewhere easy with non-cookery and man-cookery. Namely, barbecue, because then it doesn't matter if it catches fire, and biltong, to which I am addicted. So I've made myself a biltong box, and we're going to take our first attempt at making biltong. Should be easy, probably won't be, at least for me. Laugh along as the kitchen goblin gets very annoyed. Okay, so we have first attempt at making biltong. I have a recipe, what I have got off the internet, and it's as good a place to start as any. We need two kilos of beef, some brown vinegar, salt, pepper, coriander seeds, sugar. So first of all, we look at the cat because it's going meow. Toast the coriander seeds in a dry pan. This should be fun because I've never toasted anything that wasn't in a toaster. Coriander seeds, two tablespoons. This is awkward because tablespoon is not a reliable size measurement. They're all different. So let's use this one because why not? So two tablespoons of coriander seeds. Isn't that fun? Okay, coriander seeds. Again, it says two tablespoons, but is that a tablespoon? Is that half a tablespoon? Who knows? Let's put some more on. It's all right, we'll eat those later. Again, is that a tablespoon? Who knows? Okay, step two. Toast the coriander seeds in a dry pan. The fun part here is everything I've looked up says toasting them and the way you know they're done is that they start to smell fragrant. I don't have a sense of smell. It's not coronavirus, I just don't have one. So let's see if I can set fire to something. It says about a minute. So, echo, one minute timer. One minute, starting one. I'm agitating them. You see, agity, wagity, wagity. Oh look, flambe. That was percussive. Absolutely bugger all is happening. Maybe I won't agitate them. That was also percussive. I was gonna overdub the sound later, but then you won't get the percussive sounds, so. I'll have to do that later. Oh, echo, stop. I've got a glamorous assistant hiding behind the camera. Do these ponk? 
No, the pan's not even hot yet. You've got to let the pan heat. So what it didn't say in the instructions is you have to let the pan heat. And I'm assuming the way you find out when a pan is hot is when you put your faint finger on it and it fucking burns. So let's do another try. Echo, one minute timer. One minute, starting now. Now let Echo stop. And it's not. Well, it's warm. Do this look good to you? What do we think? Right. Bollocks is it one minute. Echo, one minute timer. One minute, starting now. This is why I don't like cookery, because it's boring. Right, you see they're changing colour? So mm. now I'll take it off quickly. No, they're, so. they're not changing colour. Yes, they are. I like a little brown. Yeah. That is done. Have these changed colour? Apparently they're done, but I'll believe it when I... Well, I can't see it. But, built on. Prep time, 30 minutes. Marinade time, 24 hours. Cook time, 5 days. Meow! Right, what do we do now? Grind down in a pestle and mortar. Okay. I will kill you. Why? You do not put pressure on the... I knew that. Echo, stop. Hi. This video is not sponsored by Amazon. Okay, we're going for a ride. <laughs> what do we have here is meat. There's no light on it here. Lovely. Right, I actually looked this up because I always thought this was the pestle and this was the mortar. This is the mortar, this is the pestle. Um, you're blocking the light. I know, but I exist. Okay. The light in this kitchen is okay. shit. Okay. Hang on. There we go. Now I'm not blocking the light. Well, I am, but hey. Grindy, grindy, grindy. Grind them like civilizations, but underneath your boot heels. Oh, they have a punk. Smell that, YouTube. Go on, take a good sniff. Time to check with the cooking goblin. <laughs> cooking goblin. Mm, smells good. Yeah, smells good. Is, does that mean ready? Yes, it's ready. Yay, they're ready. Combine all the spices and sprinkle into the meat. The other spices being salt, pepper and sugar. Which I'm assuming I can just add to the pestle. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Um, okay, two tablespoons of ground pepper. I'm not quite sure how you get a tablespoon out of this. Does the lid come off? So two teaspoons of ground black pepper. Oh, ground. No, wait. Um, so I need to grind it onto the teaspoon. Oh, this is going to go wrong, isn't it? Okay, do it on the plate. I'm on a voyage of discovery. Okay. Hang on. How do you know when you've ground a teaspoon? Is it like when you do it for your boiled eggs? God, that's going to be a lot of pepper, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's going to take you forever. Hang on. That's a lot of pepper. question is, why do I have to use ground black pepper and grind it? Why couldn't I have just used the sodding pepper grinder? What, the, the shaker. What, what difference does this make? Cooking goblin? Um, well, that other pepper's old and you're just 
releasing the essential oils from the pepper. So, so there you have it. Pressure. You need it young and full of essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say this is one teaspoon, which I assume is going to be fine because I don't like a lot of pepper. And it's only for half the amount of meat anyway. Oh no, hang on, that's, okay. that's a bit. That's another bit. Hang it all in. Get this bit artily off here. There we go. What do we do now? Next, we need two and a half teaspoons of coarse salt. Does this need to be ground goblin or as it is? Yeah, ground. Is it a ground teaspoon? Sorry, is it a teaspoon which is then ground? Or is this a teaspoon of pre-ground? Um, probably a teaspoon of ground. If you're wondering, it's Himalayan pink. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? It is more nummy looking than your average salt. Look how pink it is. Mmm, nummy, pinkity, pinkity. Oh shit, um, that looks about two, right? One, two. This is man cooking. Okay, so we've got the meat. We've got the salt, we've got the pepper, we've got the coriander. One and a half tubus, so the tubus, I've learned this. This is a tubus, as opposed to a tusp. So I'm assuming that's one of these and one of these. So. Mm -mm. What do you mean, uh-uh? Mm -mm. But the capacity of that is about twice the capacity of that. No, because they're not actual measured sizes. If you have... I know they're not. Which is bigger, that or that? This, this one's bigger. Yes, so they're not an equal measure. So a tablespoon is not a so measurement. A, a table, you've been using the same tablespoon. I'm aware of that, but I'm saying overall a tablespoon is not a unit of fucking measurement. It is. No, it's not! If you have to buy the measurement that is... Right, so it's not a tablespoon, it's a measurement. A measurement tablespoon. So you can't just use a tablespoon. This is why I don't do cookery. Then, then you add brown sugar. I, I was amazed to find out there are different types. This one is rich and trickly because that's how I like my biltong. So the question is one and a half tablespoons. Is that a tablespoon? That's two. See, that's two tablespoons, but it's on one. Level it off. Oh, I'll level you off in a minute. <laughs> right, <laughs> is that one? I, I, that's about one and a half. Okay, that's about one and a half. But contained artfully in one. Isn't this clever? Do I add the bit that fell on the side? No. I shall put this responsibly in the sink. Combine all the spices and sprinkle into the meat. Okay, how? Step two. Cut the grain of meat into one inch length thick one inch thick lengths and place in a non-metallic container. Here's one I prepared earlier. Ta-da! Look at my container. Isn't it non-metallic? Stick meat in box. Now they don't all fit, but I've watched a YouTube video about this. Isn't it mental, people watching things on YouTube? Meta. But they don't all fit, so what I'm going to artfully do is sprinkle one bit and then sprinkle the next. So, this is so complicated. Combine all the spices and sprinkle into the meat. So, uh, oh, hang on, hang on. I should grind more. I've got meaty paws. May, may I take these out after? They're fine where they are, thank you, Goblin. Look at that stirry mixy, stirry mixy. Does it matter there are whole peppercorns in here? No. That looks like muesli. What was I doing? Sprinkle into the meat. Well, you can't sprinkle something into something. You should sprinkle it onto something. So that's what we'll do. Let's be quite generous and give it a good rubbing. 
The sound effects are in the recipe. Alley oop. Now hang on, if I do that, I'll run out of stuff. No, you I will, you know. It's why you should only marinate one side. Yeah, cookery. Mmm, nummy. Caress your steak lovingly. Oh, it looks like a little heart. Boodum, boodum. Observe me caress it lovingly. Blah, 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 blah. Um. Um, okay, so that's that bit done. I'll do the other one separately. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't open my phone because my hands are all horrible. Hang on. Okay, so that's that. Then sprinkle the vinegar on and rub in. I've already rubbed it in thoroughly. So we need five tubusps of brown vinegar. So I need a receptacle. Here's one I bought earlier. Look at it. Receptacating. That's, that's a word now. So. Five of these, you know. Should I have put the... I should have put the spice mix in the vinegar really, shouldn't I? It doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> I wouldn't have known. I've lost count. Let's, get three. let's assume that's five. Four. And one for luck. It's not, it's not going to do any harm. Yeah. Okay. Here we have vinegar. I'm not telling you the name because that would be advertising. But I'll give you a clue. There's really only one brand in England. Okay, combine all the spices and sprinkle into the meat. Sprinkle the vinegar on and rub carefully. Sprinkle. 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 You can't sprinkle what you can't pick up. Sprinkle. Sprinkly, winkly, winkly. Mmm, tease it. And then I guess flip them over. And sprinkly, winkly, winkly. Mmm. Let's sprinkle some more of this because we're just devil in the care like that. Mmm, sprinkly. Mmm, sprinkly. If you're watching this and you're vegan, it's entirely your own fault. Now we're going to get creative and add what they call in England a second layer. Although it's not a layer because I've miscounted the number of bits of meat and there's only two left. So, sprinkly wrinkly, what shall I do with the excess blood? Sprinkle it as well? No, if we want it dry, don't we? What do you mean? I mean that oh, excess blood. You, no. No, because you need it dry. You've got to pass it dry afterwards. Okay. Sprinkly winkly woo woo. If anyone missed that, we don't need the excess meat. No, the excess blood. Sprinkly winkly woo woo. So, YouTube, have a poll amongst yourselves. Do you have a sprinkly woo woo? I've got a sprinkly woo woo. <laughs> sprinkly woo woo. Now, if something's gone wrong, because I've used the entire amount of spice mix that I was supposed to use for two kilos, French measurement, of meat. For one! Sprinkly winkly woo woo. Mmm, look at it. I'm assuming we just kind of rub these around and roll them around and get them nice and covered and basted, basically. Ooh, yeah! It smells of vinegar. Ooh, what a punk. Okay, these are what is known in the trade as sprinkled. Ta-da! I should make this into a cookery channel. Oh dear God, no. Okay, so it says prep time of 30 minutes. That's taken 26 and a half minutes of actual footage. And that included thrice the time for coasting the coriander seeds. Either we're efficient or we've fucked up. So cover the container, 
and let your biltong cure for 24 hours in the fridge, turning and rubbing the meat occasionally. Do you rub your meat? Here we have a professional cover, or lid as it's known. You can't sprinkle this, you clop it. Square lid doesn't fit on square pot. Um, it's not square. It's not square, it's rectangular. Or oblong. Do you have an oblong container? Mm. Here we have an oblong container of meat, which is going to form the basis of our biltong. I say basis, it's the actual edible part. Mm. Now it's going in the fridge. And this YouTube is the tricky part because we did the shopping today. Look at all that diet friendly num nums. It is diet friendly because I've lost two and a half stone. Slimming World, you can too. Not sponsored. So there you go, that's now in the fridge. I did this through the power of moving the eggs. They were sprinkly winkly woo woo too. Right, well that's leaving that for 24 hours and turning it occasionally. I won't film that because that, quite frankly, would be fucking boring. I'll see you tomorrow at the hanging part. Do you like to be well hung?